welcome to Shedlock 2000's Land Rover Garage and many interesting things. Um, now it's been quite a while since I've recorded a video for you since I did that the review of the knocking tyres and there's there's been quite a there's been a number of reasons for that. Firstly, uh, I've been trying to concentrate on some academic stuff, um, and uh, and also apparently uh, my health is failing in. in greater ways than I'd anticipated. I have actually got uh, a heart condition now which is, is I've had for a little while and it's been sudden, it's been diagnosed and uh, so that sort of slowed me down a bit and I've also got um, bone spurs on both my knees uh, which has been caused by carrying too many heavy things in my lifetime basically having a bit of a rough life and uh, and uh, it's making it quite painful to kneel down and get all the jobs done but <laughs> uh, so that and my back and my back still bad and my shoulders not very good and, and this juvenile cataract is making my vision worse so I'm about falling apart basically really but anyway um, I had come back tonight I've just been uh, you can see I'm covered in cement and, and concrete dust here because I have just come back from dealing with a crack in a in a Victorian basement foundation foundation wall concrete wall and I'd come back with every intention of doing a little video on how to replace these struts uh, which you can see here on tailgate and, and uh, uh, these have habit if they're on the way out when it gets cold uh, they have habit of not pushing the tailgate up properly and you sort of pop the boot and, and lift the tailgate and it sort of just hovers about here <laughs> and then you bang your head on it so I've bought two fresh struts now they are Land Rover struts but they've gone a bit nuts really they, they, they're a bit too excited and they, they push that tailgate up far more than they should do really um, so I don't know whether hello pal so I don't know whether I'm going to have to take them off and get some different ones or what but I, I had originally come out to do this bit of a video with you um, I was going to show you how to do these and they also make a gas strut for the lower tailgate so I was going to show you how to fit that uh, but in virtue of the fact that I've just spent the last hour trying to find him God, <laughs> uh, that's out of the window and I, I can't show you how to replace it because I don't know where he did he's here somewhere but anyway um, so a bit of a shift of pace really and, and what I've decided to do now is I've sort of jumped on a bit of a bandwagon really and I'm going to try and uh, share with you how much it's cost me to put this Land Rover, this Range Rover that I bought um, to put it right into the, the sort of what I consider to be right into the uh, into the condition it is at the moment and how I like things uh, now it's not going to be a very long video this I don't think but uh, there is this rumour and the reputation that buying Land Rovers in North America is quite a quite a pricey sort of activity because they're not very reliable and they're, uh, they're quite sort of expensive to repair but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash up some uh, receipts that I've got on online and I'm going to tell you how much it's basically cost me now I should preface that by noticing uh, or at least admitting that this Range Rover that I bought was actually the cheapest Range Rover in Canada at the time at least 20 let me rephrase that it was the cheapest 2010 stroke 2012 um, model uh, L322 in Canada when I bought it and I bought it out of an auction I'm not really a big fan of buying things out of auctions and, and this one was it had been in the auction for quite some time it had been there for over 12 months um, I had sort of been watching it with minor interest at the time but it had started out being priced at $39,000 which for a low mileage uh, sorry $35,000 and so for a low mileage autobiography it wasn't that wasn't that far out really considering the prices of all the other uh, L322s in, in Canada um, however it did come with a bit of an engine noise and I was able to pick it up after it sat in, sitting at the auction house for a year uh, or very nearly a year I was able to pick it up for twelve and a half thousand plus taxes and, and buying fees so it was a very cheap model it was a very cheap vehicle um, 
and really it wasn't in that bad a shape it is a fairly i know it's an autobiography but my 2011 had a bit more gear on it really it had the cameras on it and some other sorts of stuff and this one although it's got rear climate control and some other bits and bobs and leather everywhere that my other one didn't have um this one also doesn't have things that my other one did have if you see what i mean the 2011 so um this is uh about well at the time it was the cheapest one i could see advertised anywhere at least advertised in in canada um and it did need a couple of things doing sort of immediately the first thing it needed was a battery and i don't have the receipt for the battery uh, so i can't it was a bit of a cash deal with a guy actually in calgary at the time i literally drove it <laughs> to the to this guy's place and, and we threw a battery on um there and then and uh that cost me about 150 dollars i'll keep a bit of a running total somewhere and we'll build a little spreadsheet and i'll share it with you at the side of the screen somewhere um now it did need some new brake pads um and i bought green stuff brake pads but i didn't replace the discs and it did need uh the front control arms doing and i did the brake pads and the front control arms myself i paid 100 and i paid 150 something dollars for the control arms uh and i paid about 300 dollars for the the green stuff brake pads the green stuff's a bit awkward to find here uh e ebc brakes are on um easy to get in alberta and uh, i ended up buying them from ebay actually oddly enough because they were cheaper there I'll, I'll find the receipt for that and i'll throw you that up um but in terms of actual mechanical work uh really that was that was all it was actually desperate of in addition to uh and i'm just looking here at the receipt this is this is my receipt from land rover um not long after i bought it i had to go to calgary to pick some stuff up and while i was up there i got them just to do a few little things um because being down here in <laughs> in redneck berta um it's very difficult to get people to do things uh to the land rover now i don't have a an air conditioning refrigerant pump machine um so land rover uh recharged the ac for me um and they also replaced the seat heater motors the seat heater blower motors in the driver's side um both of them now only one of them was gone uh but the as i'm sure you know you have to strip the whole back of the seat out and the is a bit hard to get that so while it was up there i asked them to do both and i gave them one unit that i got uh in stock here um and uh and then i gave them a, uh, and then they got me the other one um and fitted that for me and they also flushed the transfer box now that was quite pricey they did the transfer box because uh it was up there and i hadn't bought the oil from them yet i did i did a full oil change myself but i knew that i'd got all the oil i needed for the differentials and the engine and the tra and transmission down here already so the only oil i was missing was the transfer box so while it was up there i got them to do that um now it did require it did blow uh a drive shaft on the front for some reason or other and i'm not quite sure why that happened um that cost me 250 dollars, and i bought it from a pal of mine it actually curiously enough it was one that i got stock uh that i sold my pal kevin when i bought uh the defender i sold him most of my spares so i actually bought that back off him for 250 quid 250 dollars um and in terms of mechanical issues that's all this vehicle's cost me uh so we'll just go over that again that's brakes brake pads not brake rotors um i don't really normally like doing a pad slap but there was it's very low mileage is this land rover uh so there was there was no noticeable wear to this at all so i just did a pad slap of the dbc brakes front control arms drive shaft air conditioning and the two uh heat blower motor things um and uh and apparently a clip uh so they've done that for me and i'll show you that bill but that that bill here was about a grand so with the battery that's uh about 1200 
and then with the drive shaft that's 1500 and then with the front control arms that would probably be uh, 1800 and then the pads that's probably t so we'll call it 2250 for that um, and everything else has been sort of supplemental really in terms of, of, of modifying really rather than require I will actually know I'll tell you a lie uh, the sun visor clips uh, when when you swing the sun visors sideways uh, and then you put them back into the position the sun visor clips had broken and uh, both of them on both sides so I replaced those now they were quite expensive and I did price them up from Land Rover in Calgary uh, while I, I got a few more bits of trims and clips and things from them um, and screws and one thing and another and uh, they uh, were very expensive for some reason on, on some parts they're quite expensive so I ended up buying from eBay and they were 50 quid uh, or 50 dollars I think they were for I'll find, find the receipt for that as well uh, so two of those that's another and so let's say 2500 so I bought the thing for 12,500 12, and then I put another 2500 at it so that in terms of mechanical costs to get it running with no codes and no other drama it was twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, now then, about two months after I bought it, uh, I had an issue with the rear parking sensors. Um, I had assumed that one of the parking sensors had gone faulty, and that was actually my initial diagnosis. I think I might have mentioned that to you when I first bought it, and we did the introduction video. Uh, but it turned out that the and I've got the old box somewhere, but it turned out that the module, which sits underneath, uh, got water in it, and it had corroded the module. And uh, so I replaced that module with a fresh one, and that wasn't. Uh, terribly expensive but it was more expensive than I'd preferred uh, that was I think that were $300 um, I did buy a scrap one out of a scrap yard first and some people get away with putting those in uh, from a Range Rover Sport they will fit but only if they haven't been VIN coded and some of them are and some of them aren't mine the one I'd picked up from my breakers up here had sadly been coded which meant that it wasn't able to be used that's why I've got it here I can't do it with it um, and I needed a fresh one that hadn't been VIN coded so anyway Land Rover did that because then it needed to be uh, paired with the computer and I don't have Pathfinder so that was that so I suppose you could say 20, 2700 so uh, in total to get it running absolutely sp sp spot on um, it required uh, the total price was about 15,300 we'll say now it was sold with an engine noise and it took me quite some time to diagnose what it was uh, and it turned out to be as I had mentioned in a couple of videos uh, the, the supercharger coupler uh, and Land Rover did that for me as well while I went to um, uh, to Poland for my conference so I dropped the, the vehicle off up with Land Rover and they had it for a week and um, replaced that now that bill was £2,300 um, and, uh, and that wasn't actually necessary it was just annoying it wasn't damaged to the extent that it was going to collapse at any moment it just had a very faint knock and I'm quite I'm quite fussy about things like that as, as, as you know um, and really I only did it because it was a <laughs> it was a nice place to park my car for a week without paying the airport charges um, so anyway Land Rover did that for me <coughs> Uh, and it didn't really need doing I've got it's actually got the bits are in the box around the corner um, and there wasn't that much wear on that spindle at all but while they were in there I also got them to throw on a new uh, um, a, a new water pump there's nothing wrong with the old water pump either um, but uh, my 2011 water pump failed at about 
350,000 kilometers uh, and I said at the time that I wished I'd got a spare because it did take quite some time to order one so while it was in uh, they put a water pump on it for me and it was $250 uh, and they did it at the same time as they did the uh, supercharger um, uh, isolator because it's all related and they put a new belt on and some other stuff um, now none of that stuff was necessary the reason I'm, I'm not including that with the getting the car running price is because it wasn't actually necessary it was just a very slight slight knock that was going to develop probably over the next five years or so into into something that would uh, be needed later on so I preemptively uh, resolved that um, so that we'll get that all out of the way that's that's everything that is spent on it in order to get it running spot on and, and without any codes uh, and what I then spent on it was um, a bunch of money with powerful UK <laughs> now I like Simon Simon's a top banana uh, Simon runs a powerful UK and he, and, uh, he supplies uh, accessories and parts and bits of things for um, every Land Rover model really basically and, and I do like to support Simon when I can and so uh, I bought a bunch of stuff off him and both basically what I bought off him was were lights mostly and uh, paddle shift uh, so I've got I bought new puddle lamps for the door mirrors and underneath the bottom of the doors I bought uh, uh, I bought the, the halo front fogs uh, which you'll have seen my video on um, I bought uh, the internal LED light kit which I mean they're off now because the vehicle shut down but uh, the whole interior light kit uh, for the for the map lights and all the rest of it replaced all of those uh, all of these and um, I also replaced these uh, number plate lights and the backup lights and I'll show you some videos of those a uh, little bits of snippets and you, you'll probably see me actually uh, the videos on them but the whole the whole I've got four bills here from from powerful UK from Simon um, and really I probably spent well this is 30 which one's this two 30 um, 300 so 350 uh, 350 and 350 400 and then a 204 where's the 204 uh, 204 uh, so I spent 500 quid 500 pounds with uh, with with Simon and that got me the paddle shifts and all the lights and uh, the front fog lights and a bunch of other things and I'll show you those receipts as well uh, the paddle shift um, oh, it is on here somewhere, where's the paddle shift yeah, here we are, so the paddle shift is uh, uh, 86 quid um, and I bought a, was a tailgate rubber switch and some just, just some little bits of bobs uh, really just to sharpen it up um, and so there's 500 pounds of that now that would be 750 dollars give or take and uh, in addition to the uh, the interior lights I also added uh, the Osram uh, Nightingale or Nightbreaker uh, headlights and the foreign um, LED main beam lights. Uh, the the Osram lights were quite expensive. They were two hundred and thirty something dollars, two hundred forty something dollars, and uh, they are an improvement on the original OEM equipment. But I don't know that they're actually that much better than than the standard equipment. Um, they're probably forty percent brighter, maybe I would guess. Uh, however, the the far and LED lights um, for the for the main beams they're probably twice, maybe three times as bright as the as the standard. I think it's a H7 or whatever it is that that that, uh, um, that Land Rover use. Uh, and swapping them out for that LED uh, is a significant upgrade. Um, in fact, I would say that apart from the paddle shift. 
if I were to recommend anybody to have any mod on a on a on an L322, uh, it would be to install those um, uh, those LED headlights because it, it you know it really does make that much. Out here, it's really it's very dark. Uh, like it's quite difficult to explain how dark it is, but when you go out into the mountains. Um, because there's so much brush and trees and, and all that kind of organic material it really sucks the light out of everywhere and, and in between little villages there's there's no lights at all and so it becomes extraordinarily dark and uh, and no matter how much light you have it, it really sort of disappears into the brush and and uh, and and gets almost pulled out of the car so so uh, the defender was particularly poor its headlights were terrible <coughs> Now here you are ladies and gentle persons, this is the BC this, you can tell that because it's raining and uh, we're not absolutely super late at night, it's only about half past eight really but uh, actually half past seven in their time but it's very dark because it's cloudy, it's raining and there's a bit of a storm here and one of the things I wanted to mention to you and I've sort of I've received a bit of a bit of criticism I guess because I have been complaining about the paucity of the headlights which are quite, in my book, quite poor uh, so what we've got here is I've got my main beam on and you can sort of see where the road goes, can't you, a bit, I guess and, uh, and then, like, the road disappears in front of you uh, especially when you've got your low beams on for one reason or other and Defender does a good job of flicking to and from and sometimes it, it's a bit stroby really because it picks up these lights at the side of the road and, and of course then them become headlights coming on the road and it switches itself off but any roll. So um, we're just on standard beam here with the, with the uh, front fogs and I've just knocked those off and I'll put them back on here doesn't make a massive amount of difference but it does make some now I just wanted to point out to you there's a car right up in front it's happening about half a mile away I guess and you can't really see it uh, on the camera it's a little bit more visible the headlights don't go anywhere near it obviously just got around the corner now I'm just going to turn big light on oh did you see the light in there there's big light you see the difference I can see right into the distance now and I can see everything and that's important because out here where there's a lot of deer and elk and all manner of stuff on the side of the road uh, it's a big drama because of course they fade in I mean they camouflage as they begin with aren't they but they're even worse in dark fortunately they don't cross the road so often but elk do have an habit of standing on the main road <laughs> uh, for some reason or other when it's raining and I don't know why they do that perhaps it's warmer or something I don't, I don't know but any road the, the discoveries were quite good but the the defenders were terrible and and this in its standard form of course only has those little halogen um well little i mean the halogen headlights and and these leds really do help make the uh the um mountain driving a lot safer um so those two were updated i also like the the, the fogs um the halo fogs that I fitted from from powerful UK that I mentioned earlier on uh, they all the, the outside halo ring obviously comes on all the time uh, because that's how I've set it to come on but the the fog light itself is also brighter uh, and is is helpful at some stage tucked away in the corner here I've got that old um, the the big light bar that I had fitted to the uh, to the defender um, and I had intended to throw it onto here, but the the roof rack sits a little lower to the roof than it does on the Defender, and it and, it, and that won't really fit. That's from um, from Australia, uh, probably one of the best light bars that I've ever bought as well. Uh, but they make a thin version uh, that neatly fits underneath that edge, and I I might end up fitting one of those at some stage. I'm not desperately sure about that because. Um, uh, that did add a lot of wind noise to the roof rack uh, I might fit that actually behind the grill it's small it's narrow enough that I could fit it behind the grill and I'll throw you up the details of that somewhere too because they're they're, um, uh, they're an extremely good light bar and they are quite inexpensive so if you're wanting uh, you know an alternate light bar that produces almost as much light as the laser lamps and the 
and the rigid light bars I mean this actually outperforms the rigid light bar um, and is ooh, a third of the price anyway I'll, I'll throw that up on the screen and then you can see what that is and uh, I'll link you to uh, this side here I'll link you to the uh, to the the video in which I fit it as well so I also bought uh, uh, from eBay a new push button start switch I've got the old box somewhere now that was quite expensive as well uh, there was nothing wrong with the original one it worked fine but as they do the push button itself the, the button part had cracked and I didn't like the aesthetics of it so I replaced that uh, and I also then I suppose we could add the tyres on it because I did buy tyres for it uh, but there was nothing actually wrong with the original tyres uh, it, it had fitted um, uh, sort of fairly new Blizzax uh, were fitted to it but of course you followed my um, tyre story and I'd got a set of the, well actually these winters these Nokia uh, Hecapolita 9s and I wanted to be able to fit those and um, the other tyres as well uh, without worrying about the size differential uh, between the two but that meant that I had to buy a new spare so there's $300 for a new spare and these rims and this isn't anything to do with the vehicle but these rims uh, I've had for eight years uh, and they needed some tyre pressure monitor sensors uh, so that cost me 100 quid um, which I also bought from the UK um, now I suppose we could mention the roof rack as well but I, that was bought for me Discovery and it cost me nothing to build the actual brackets um, because uh, me and my pal did those um, at Throttle Stop uh, Garage uh, shout out to my mate and so he's done that and uh, we, we did those together so built that that was free but the rack itself was about $1,500 and that came obviously from, from the Discovery but really that's oh actually no I'm telling a lie I bought these little um these little side I don't know if you can see them here because Jip's in the way aren't you pal uh, but these nets these cargo nets um, I bought those from eBay as well uh, and basically that's it so in terms of costs uh, this quite literally the cheapest Range Rover in Canada uh, was bought for 12,000 plus taxes and fees um, and I spent we'll call it we'll call it $2,800 on, on getting it absolutely running right uh, and then if we'll ignore the fact that I changed the inter the uh, uh, isolator for the for the supercharger because um, it wasn't actually a mechanical issue uh, and it was changed because I'm OCD <laughs> uh, preventative maintenance and all that kind of stuff um, and so basically the whole vehicle cost me 15,500 uh, and that's it uh, another 500 dollars 500 pounds another 750 for various bits of, of customization and a roof rack uh, and that's all it's actually cost me in the year that I've had it now that might sound quite a bit like I've spent a lot of money in a year but really I did buy a vehicle that had, had literally been studded and auctioned for a year and hadn't been run hadn't been maintained it had been stood outside in minus 40 uh, which may or may not have had something to do with the sun visor clip breaking so um, I don't think that that's actually quite a lot of money uh, given that I spent well over $2,500 in hotel and fuel fees just driving my car my Land Rover Defender up to Calgary to have Calgary Land Rover uh, attend to the warranty issues repeatedly and often um, well over in fact the the I spent more than that on Albert. I spent more than that uh, in hotel bills while they were trying to fix Albert while I was at the dealership um, because I was probably there for a week. Uh, and so that's it. That's how much it's cost me. We'll throw, we'll put all this spreadsheet up at the end, and you'll be able to see um, what those how those costs are isolated out and broken down. 
um, and that's all there is for this particular video really uh, and I don't think that that whole price is is more than I would spend on some other kind of vehicle you know if I bought a BMW or some some other sort of thing a Chevrolet pickup truck or something I could <laughs> I'm fairly certain I'd need a new set of injectors at some stage if I bought one of them V8s um, so uh, so basically that's that uh, do I consider a Land Rover uh, an unreasonable expensive unpredictable um, vehicle no not in the slightest uh, and what you get for that money is far superior in terms of ride comfort and quality of um, the quality of build and, and you know experience in the cab far greater than anything else that you'll find in the market in, in North America but even something as old as this still holds up quite comparatively well uh, to the technological specifications of, of comparative vehicles on the market uh, even new Land Rover vehicles like I pointed out to you there's not actually much that I miss on this Range Rover uh, from either Defender or the Discovery with the with the perhaps exception being the uh, adaptive um, uh, adaptive cruise and maybe the uh, the in control thing that starts the engine and, and I think that's probably the only thing that I miss uh, anyway with that uh, thank you very much for tuning in to, to the channel I do hope you found that at least somewhat interesting and have a rough idea around what you might be looking at to, to do these sorts of repairs and, and what kinds of things you need to be looking at and um, uh, we'll say goodbye me and Jip will go and get some food thank you very much for tuning in see you next time cheerio